Hi, I'm Nanmar de Les Angeles, and today, I'm going to share some different types of theater around the world. So first is the Philippine theater. Did you know what is the history of Philippine theater? Philippine theater is where it is a cultural, traditional, and historical influences that shape it through the century. The dramatic forms that flourish and continue to flourish among different people in archipelago include the indigenous and mainly Malayan character. Did you know after the Japanese occupation, the Philippine theater has evolved to become an amalgamation of various influences such as Sesuela, Comedia, Vaudeville, and Western classics. Theater was largely performed in English during the time, as it became a large part of classroom education. Tanghalang Pilipino is the leading exponent of Philippine theater and the resident drama company of Cultural Center of the Philippines since its organization in 1987. The Tanghalang Pilipino season runs from July to March. Epic Poetry Epic poetry is considered the highest point of Filipino folk literature and dates back from pre-colonial period. Duplo The Duplo is a poetic debate presented through songs and dance which originated indigenous courtship customs. Moro 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 Moro, also called Comedia, the earliest known form of organized theater in the Philippines. It was created by Spanish priests. Other than epic recitations, whatever indigenous theatrical forms may have existed there before were obliterated by the Spanish to facilitate the spread of Christianity. Jugar con Fuego by Francisco Asenjo Barbieri was the first Zorzuela introduced in the country in the late 1878 or early 1879. By August 17, 1893, Teatro Zorilla, the home of Zorzuela, was inaugurated. The Philippine theater history was indeed pretty, right? This is not the end of the story and discussion. If you see it to yourself, the Philippine theater is longer and historical than you imagine. Next is Asian theater. It combines elements of dance, drama, music, and poetry into a highly stylized retelling of a well-known story. Not much happens in an outplay. The performers are storytellers that use their visual appearance and movements to suggest the story rather than actually reenacting it. There are four main types of stages which are Found stages, also referred to as a found space or profile theater. Found stages are non-theatrical areas that are converted into theater spaces. These stages typically place audiences on risers facing the stage. They do not require staging such as props, lighting, or other theatrical elements. Proscenium stages. Proscenium in theater, the frame or arch separating the stage from the auditorium through which the action of play is viewed. Trust stages. A truss stage, also known as a platform stage or open stage, is one that extends into the audience on three sides and is connected to the backstage area by its upstage end. Arena stages, where the audience totally surrounds the stage. Arena is also known as theater in the round staging. Arenas are Asians, of course, but drama in the round performed for an audience surrounding the stage is largely a 20th century American development. Although there are many kinds of theater in Japan, the best known are the no and the kabuki. No drama is the oldest surviving form of Japanese theater. It combines music, dance, and acting to communicate Buddhist themes. Often the plot of a no play recreates famous scenes from well-known works of Japanese literature such as the tale of Genji or the tale of the Heiki. Kabuki is a traditional Japanese popular drama with singing and dancing performed in a highly stylized manner. A rich blend of music, dance, mime, and spectacular staging and costuming. It has been a major theatrical form in Japan for four centuries. Third is classical theater. Classical theater actually comes from a Greek word meaning action which is derived from the verb meaning to do or to act. The enactment of drama in theater, performed by actors on a stage before an audience, presupposes collaborative modes of production and a collective form of reception. But who created classical theater? The origin of classical acting stems from an acting system created by Russian actor and director 
Konstantin Stanislavski, who rose to prominence in the late 1800s and early 1900s. Classical theater is a form of theater that focuses on the audience's creativity to portray the play's scene and ambience. The speech in classical theater is usually free verse or soaring dramatic prose. An example is Macbeth by William Shakespeare. It's a classical play featuring dialogues and characters that remain relevant for today's audiences. The main message of Macbeth is the destruction wrought when ambition goes unchecked by moral constraints. Macbeth is a courageous Scottish general who is not naturally inclined to commit evil deeds, yet he deeply desires power and advancement. And lastly, modern theater. Modern theater includes performances of plays and musical theater. This period of drama dates back to the late 1800s when the Industrial Revolution was on its way. Within modern theater, many different movements evolve, which are realism, naturalism, anti-realism, symbolism, expressionism, futurism, surrealism, theater of cruelty, epic theater, existentialism, and theater of the absurd. Now, let's know what these movements are. So first is the realism. This is by far the most popular and longest-standing movement of modern theater. The idea was instead of actors representing characters, the actor would become the character. Realism gives the audience a large amount of real-life evidence that allows them to arrive at their own conclusion. One of the pioneers of realism is Henrik Ibsen, also known as the father of dramatic realism. Naturalism is an extreme form of realism. It began in France in the 19th century. It refers to the theater that attempts to create an illusion of reality through a range of dramatic and theatrical strategies. Anti-realism is any form of theater which rejects realism. The movement had already invaded the imagination of playwrights, resulting in the birth of anti-realist theater movement. These plays combined music, mythology, heavy special effects in storytelling, and symbolism. Symbolism was considered to be a reaction against the plays that embodied naturalism and realism at the turn of 20th century. It focused on symbolic imagery instead of concrete actions to communicate with the audience. This movement speed rapidly because designers and authors were excited by the possibility of a theater free of rigid realistic constraints. Designers of the time were Adolf Afia and Gordon Craig. Leaders in this movement include Paul Fort. Expressionism is flourished in Germany during World War I. The representation of reality was distorted in order to communicate inner feelings and plays are highly subjective. Major German playwrights include Ernst Toller and George Kaiser. Futurism originated in Italy around 1909. It idealized war and the machine age. They believe audiences should be confronted and antagonized. Surrealism began in France in 1924. They argued that the subconsciousness is the highest plane of reality and play seemed to be set in a dream world. Theater of Cruelty is a revolt against realistic theater originated in France in the 1930s, developed by Antony Artaud. He believed that the viewer's senses should be bombarded. It is based on magic and ritual which would evoke deep, violent, and erotic impulses. Epic theater is a form of theater aimed at intellect rather than emotions in order to affect social change. The goal of epic theater is to instruct. It is developed by Bertolt Brecht. Existentialism is an idea started by John Paul Sartre and Albert Camus. This idea was in reaction to World War II. Existentialists believe existence has little meaning and God does not exist. Theater of the Absurd It is a small, unorganized movement in the 50s and 60s. Absurdist playwrights believe 
our existence is futile and nonsensical, the characters are not realistic, setting are sometimes unrecognizable, and language is sparse and characters fail to communicate effectively. One of the pioneers of this movement is Samuel Beckett. One of the most significant contrasts between classical drama and modern is the difference in the protagonist. Classical tragedy, for instance, involves the royalty. In contrast, modern drama often uses common people as protagonists. Nowadays, we have special effects in modern theater that are taken for granted by the audiences, such as flashing lights, smoke, electronic sound, and even microphones for actors that were all not available to the ancient Greeks back then. Summary is today's theater is and can be anything and everything. As styles merge, blend, and morph, theater has an intention that will lead to a purpose. Again, I'm Yanmer Dalas Angeles and I hope you learned something from me.